Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. I'm going to be talking about a movie called Unforgiven. Right off the bat, one of my favorite westerns. Directed and starring Clint Eastwood. It's 1992. It was when it came out. I think there's a different writer though. It's written by David Webb Peoples. What can you say about this movie? Arguably one of the best westerns. I would say if you're going to go criteria and try to pick one, I could understand saying something like The Magnificent Seven with a, although it has its serious talk themes, it has that uh, adventure of music and that uh, working for the underdog aspect. So I could see it not being to people's liking on how dark, dreary, and where it ultimately leads and ends is not a pretty picture for the most part. So I can understand that, you know, I, I, I saw the Unforgiven. Yeah, it's a great movie, but, um, you know, I watched it once and you know, too dreary or whatever. I get it. I don't mind. I love watching Westerns. I've watched them since I was a kid. I've done huge deep dives into all the black and white oldies, westerns, even went into the TV realm, watched all, I can I mean, just get fascinated, and sometimes I get in these um, rhythms of, you know, certain genres and such. And I'll be biased, yes, I'll admit it, I mean, Clint Eastwood's my favorite, no one's been able to come close in my opinion. It also stars... Gene Hackman, Morgan Freeman, and Richard Harris, and amazing performances everywhere in this movie, from the side characters to people in the fucking bar. I mean, this movie does it all well, shot, filmed, everything. This is him ending, I guess in a way, ending his uh, Western foray, and I think no one really did it better than him. As I said, talking about the theme and the plot, I don't go too deep into these things, but it's old and it's got its critical claim. It's not something to be spoiled too much. I might go a little bit more, so I'll be a little bit warned, but nothing blatant, I hope. But it is a favorite movie of mine. Watch it as much as I can. Just great. And even the music, it's almost that it's absent and not remembered for reason. This movie goes into a place where you can count, I guess you can count on all the Westerns you've watched. Anybody who's like an anti-hero or on the brink who will do um, questionable things and even bad things, gunslinger, that type of uh, character, even some of Clint Eastwood's former characters, you can see this as being the continuation. So we have Clint Eastwood working on a farm with two kids, a wife passed away, and you can almost bridge it between, like I said, lots of movies and say, okay, well, this is the culmination of what happens when you're a, uh, a killer or a gunman or you go looking for bounties in that type of lifestyle. And the movie does it well and doesn't pull any punches. So he's working his ass off on the farm. And he tries to get brought into a, um, a mission, so to speak, or a bounty. And he turns it down, and leading one thing leads to another, and he's got a dilemma now because his cattle is sick, he's got the two kids, and he decides to take him up on his offer, he goes to an old friend, someone he can trust, and right off the bat you can see can't even get on his horse. He could barely shoot straight. And his attitude, he just, it oozes out of him. The pains in his joints, the uh, weather he's got to deal with. And this is all done beautifully, laid out. The plot is excellent. How it begins to unfold that the young kid who's bragging, who eventually gets him into this because of what happened. There was an incident in. Uh, let's say Gene Hackman's town 
if you want to, you know, sheriff or whatever. And the prostitutes put out a bounty on uh, several men or two men who disfigured them because the sheriff would do nothing. It was all about cattle. They get into it and it's done well, cutting between this uh, house of prostitution, the prostitutes dealing with being treated like garbage and not being represented in a way. There's no one sticking up for them, so they put a bounty out. He convinces his friend to join him, and Morgan Freeman's the friend. They go back, and there's awesome dialogue, especially when they meet the kid, because he decides to go get his friend and meet up with the kid who has this bounty. And right off the bat, you know, show, don't tell. And when you can do both well, it's just an amazing uh, feat. The kid's got problems with eyesight. He's got this gung-ho nature. And you realize that this is um, going to be an interesting journey. They test him and they get this banter going. And it's just done so well. Even the young kid, or it's playing the young kid, and Morgan Freeman. And there's this menacing undertone of who Clint Eastwood's character really is. Uh, there's this, uh, William Money, um, yeah, Money, he, um, he's got this background that they keep alluding to, or the kid keeps bringing up as something to look up to, and, and just seems to be prying here and there enough that Morgan Freeman can fill in and give you an idea of what Clint Eastwood's character, William Money, was capable of. And it starts to come out, and you think it's going to hit a point, and then it does a nice little twist there, and it shows that um, Morgan Freeman cannot go through with this. He, they cap the corner, a group of these people, one of them's on the bounty, and, um, oh, well, I'm kind of, there's another important part that they, uh, there is a come up in, in, a, in a certain situation because the weather gets to Clint Eastwood and he gets his ass kicked. And um, Morgan Freeman and the kid have to like jump out a fucking window because they're taking payment for this bounty with uh, sex or something. And these are two old men with a young kid who's in way over his fucking head. They have to go rest, heal up, and like these moments are. What makes this movie really important, in my, in my opinion, is a realism to this. That a lot of these Western movies, you know, I was such into it. I had the belt buckle and the holsters. I've been fascinated with the guns. Even when I made my own role-playing system, I went into all the first guns that we created. And it's just uh, a fascinating topic for me. Uh, it goes back to my earliest childhood. And this is almost like what really would happen. I mean, yeah, you don't see his younger days. And you could just, like I said, piece together a movie that you've seen that you could see this guy would have turned into this. He eventually would have caved in and settled in with a woman who loved him, gave up his guns and his former life, and have children. And that past is reawakened. And it's done brilliantly. So you've got ups and downs where. Um, you don't know if he's going to make it. He's like, he gets terribly sick. And then I'll come to where I backtrack where Morgan Freeman can't go through with it. So it leads to one of the most dire, awkward, odd feeling situations. I remember when I watched this movie, they wound this guy. in the belly and he doesn't die right away and you can hear him screaming and pleading for help and it grates on our so-called protagonist and it Clint Eastwood just said give him some fucking water god damn it like it's just epic and they know they got him or in that sense they're gonna you know kill him and he's gonna die from it but the whole situation is done so well and it's so 
riveting, impactful. There's a reason why this movie gets a lot of critical acclaim. Anyway, you're looking at Morgan Freeman leaving, like, you know, hey, you need my rifle, take it, uh, whatever. Um, then the kid and Clint Eastwood, William Money, they decide to finish it. And it comes to a climactic, sort of climactic ending. And when they meet the prostitutes, they tell him that their friend was caught. And there's this shift in the movie. I get chills thinking about it. That's how good the, these actors are. The writing, the direction. It just all comes together. They finish their mission, but Morgan Freeman gets caught on the trail. They bring him back. They interrogate him. They kill him. And they leave him in the fucking storefront window in like a box. And this is a great cinematic visual, and it is amazing. They tie in, the, you know, one of the things you do uh, writing and visually wise in movies, you tie in the attitude to the weather. And it's pouring fucking rain. And William Money goes into the town. And this ending of this movie is just fucking fabulous. It's mind-blowingly done well. There's a menace. There's a realism. There's a fucking character who, in a former part of the movie, it's shifting between the prostitutes and Gene Hackman, and there's this character coming in for the bounty. He has a pretty famous name, and William, um, Gene Hackman is teasing him and exposing him as a fraud. They, you know, they write dime store novels, and there's a writer in this who follows that guy around, he's going to write stories about him, and, you know, the nickel and dime stories. This character is such a great portrayal of, like, what is seen and written about in these stories, why people become legendary. Um, Gene Hackman revealing that this guy in the uh, jail cell is um, famous for killing somebody, and it was like he was drunk, he shot himself in the foot. You know, all these stories are um, made in, like, English Bob, they called him, was... Uh, just embarrassed and, you know, given his walking papers and told to leave. He actually gets an opportunity to pull a gun on. You know, he gives him it. He tells the writer to give him the gun. Anyway, the shifting between scenes, the editing, the plot, the underlying menace that comes out at the end. This last scene in the bar where William Money is fucking pissed. He's, in, he's angry. He's and the guy asks him a question, like, at the end of it, he's like, um, you know, amazed at what he can do. He gives some people an option to leave. He's like, get the fuck out. And he comes in with a shotgun, and and I think the one of the wording is, um, he answers the guy's question. He's like, I've always been good at killing people. And it's just, oh, and then he, he leaves and he warns the town, uh, like, if you don't take care of my friend's body, I will fucking come back. <laughs> and he's like, I'll kill you all. I'll kill everybody you love. One of those things. Oh, man. Just epic. One of the best Westerns, hands down. Arguably, I uh, debate. Yeah, it might not be in your wheelhouse of something to watch. You know, you're just not that type of person who watches a, a, a real um, portrayal of a person whose life in the past is left behind and he picks it back up and this isn't just like building houses or this is a man who made a living by killing uh and the stories that you're being told with the writer and the um english bob type where, where gene hackman's exposing him it's almost juxtaposed by um william money stories that the kid's saying, and and Morgan Freeman's like, no, it's worse than that. I'm just giving you a little uh, nuances of everything, and I did do some spoilers there, so it's just a fabulous, it's just great. I did a podcast on Pale Rider, 
which I described, these are like two, one, two of my favorites. And Pale Rider is something you watch more. Like, I watch it more often. It's got that theme. He's, you know, either he's a fucking spirit or he's a, uh, he survived six gunshots. He's a priest. And then he protects the town. He takes his collar off, deals with it. But it has more of an upbeat. It's more of a family, love, uh, community aspect. This is just a real gritty performance, portrayal of a former killer, I don't know if you want to call him gunslinger, a mercenary, or a bounty hunter. Um, you can even see he was bad at, at points, and uh, objectively a bad person. And it changes, he changes his life, and there's a little bit of writing on the screen that tells about him and his wife, and they don't understand how she married him, and you get that she tamed him type thing. It's just done so well, the subtlety of the music, no need for bombastic um, interplays unless it's deserving, you know, it does it all well. This look into William Money is fascinating, and you see it from the beginning, you, you know it's there, it's, it's always been underneath things. You don't get it maybe from the beginning when he's just with his kids, but you can tell when he's ready to leave, he's like, you know, you got to go to your so-and-so, I'll be back. And this is life in those times. Uh, you know, they have to get their cattle, they have to have a certain amount of cattle, a certain amount of money to get to feed and take care of the land. Animals get sick and he's lost his love of his life in that sense, that kind of theme or trope. And this is just um, uh, an experience I think you got to get into. You got to give it a chance. If, if you're into that, I mean, like I said, I, I get it in some sense, but watch The Unforgiven. I said The Unforgiven. It's just called Unforgiven, right? I don't know how you would uh, pronounce it in this way. So William Money, just a great character development. Even Gene Hackman. Morgan Freeman, it's just a beauty to behold. I think the kid's name was the Schofield Kid. Schofield was a gun company, I believe, or was a model of a gun developed back, um, I don't know, my brain tells me, right around the Revolutionary War, or, no, Civil War times. Anyway, I think it was used in 310 to Yuma. The kid had, said he had, or the kid, the character had, um, Showfields, so you can get in the models of the guns, and uh, it's just, just great riding, great scenery, letting it sit, amping it up, giving you some of the most visually stunning portrayals of the West, and that ending, the lead up to the ending, is something to behold. Wow. Not enough praise for this movie. I think it's something that stands the test of time, as I think most Westerns do. There's something about watching the Westerns and it's gritty looking, even if it's older. Even the black and white ones, you, it, I don't know. For me, the brain, my brain kind of says okay, and I, I don't care in, in that sense. Uh, there are some experiments people do with modern uh, movies, and they'll release them in black and white. And I find them sometimes interesting, but maybe it's just my brain is already registered a certain way. But not with Westerns. Westerns, I can go back. I don't care if, if, who the actor is, if it's some singer. There's fucking Elvis Westerns, which are pretty fucking bad. But all types of actors. And even the portrayals on TV, which I think Clint Eastwood started on, Rawhide. This is the culmination of his Western genre. Acting, directing, uh, you know, portion of his life. And looking at what he's done afterwards, you got to give him credit. It's not just westerns. I mean, Dirty Harry, some great directing he's done. And that's just me off the top of my head, stoned and rambling about a fucking great, awesome movie that everybody should go see. Go see. I mean, just fucking rent it, search it, find it on a streaming service, whatever you got to do. This is 
what movie you want to watch. All right, everybody. Till next time, I'm Joseph F. Olsis, Addiction Master on social media. Take care. I'll see you all next time.